All right, here we go, the main event. The Rainy Beer main event, 20 laps through the mud, the blood, the beer. 20 laps and one rider will be crowned the 1986 Rainier Supercross winner. And here we go. Is it gonna be Ward? Is it gonna be Bailey? Is it gonna be Johnson? Well, they are set to go. You see the giant screen up there looking down and watching them rock back and forth. Number six, Bailey. Number two, Lachine. Number 20, Mickey or Ricky Ryan. And there they pull back, and here we are set to go for the main. 20 laps. They're underway. It is Lachine, number 20 in front. With Johnny O'Mara second and number five, Johnson third and Glover fourth. Ricky Ryan, Check that, that is Ryan in front. Thank you, Cosby. Ricky Ryan, number 20 in front. We got six last week in San Diego. Uh, Larry, you might want to keep your eye on Ryan. He's a real up and comer. He just dropped the second, however, but he did have his best career Supercross finish last week in San Diego in sixth place, and he's really mixing it up with the leaders. Johnny O'Meara out in front. Ricky Ryan running second. Then number five, Johnson in third. Number four, Glover in fourth. And here comes Ryan. He goes in front. Ricky Ryan, Randy Mamola's rider. Says, I'm going to go for it. And Mamola is cheering him on. Johnson has gone to second. O'Mara third. Glover fourth. Then Bullen fifth. And Ward sixth. A privateer has never won an AMA Supercross. You may see history tonight. 19 laps to go, and Ricky Ryan is in control at this point. Cosby. It looks like Ward's putting some heavy moves on Bowen, and he goes past Bowen and almost Glover in one fell swoop. In fact, he does, Larry. So Ward moves into fourth place right now. And Glover takes it back and throws against Ward to fifth. It is Ricky Ryan in front, Ricky Johnson second, Johnny O third, Glover fourth, Ward fifth, Bones sixth. And then David Bailey at seventh. And Johnson's got Ryan. Ricky Johnson goes by Ricky Ryan. Homera third. But a lot can happen. We are in lap three of a 20 lap main event. Ricky Ryan holding on to third spot on the Kawasaki. They're all on production bikes, remember. Here goes Glover trying to go by Ricky Ryan for third. He's got him. Glover goes to third. Here's the right lineup now. It is Ricky Johnson in front, Johnny O in second, then Brock Glover in third, then Jeff Ward in fourth, and David Bailey fifth. Johnny's catching up to him. Uh, Larry, it looks like Johnny O'Mara is getting back on the gas, and he is moving in slightly on your leader, Ricky Johnson. Johnson number five in front, O'Mara second, number three, then Glover number four in third, number one Ward in fourth, and David Bailey number six in fifth spot. And look at this, Johnson is about to lap Ron Lachine. And Momera, or rather Ward, goes by Glover. And Ward has gone to third. Jeff Ward, how close is he now to, uh, to Omera? Well, just two turns before, Larry, he was only a second. And right now, it looks to be only five bike lanes. So let's keep our eyes glued on that battle for second. They go over the Castro Canyon. It's still Omera, number three, holding on a second. And Ward is reeling him in. They come up to the Honda Himalayas. And Ward's trying to go by. 
Homera down, checks and stays in front of him. I don't know how long he can do it, though, Cosmic. I don't know either, and uh, they're both in great shape, but Ward really needs those points to make up for that uh, broken throttle cable in Anaheim. Ricky Johnson in front, number five, with the battle is for second spot between O'Meara and Ward. We're in lap number 14 of a 20 lap, Rainier Main. Ward goes to the inside, he's got second. And Ward passes in the tunnel. And now Jeff Ward has got a real in Johnson. Johnson with an almost insurmountable lead. He is just not taking any chances at all, but riding very consistently and keeping that lead, keeping a very strong lead over Ward. Now Ward is in second, number one. The final lap, and here's Ricky Johnson going over the goal. And here it is, ladies and gentlemen, winning round five of the Nipponential Series, Ricky Johnson, Team Honda! And second place, number one, Jeff Ward, Team Kawasaki! And finishing third, Johnny O'Mara, number three. And look at this, Bailey barely holds on to fourth as Glover pushes him, Glover finishing in fifth spot. Well, we should be ready momentarily. We're waiting for RJ, the magic man of motocross, and he's working his way toward the victory rostrum, Larry. And I'll tell you what, he made good a prediction, and he's very, very happy. He's all thumbs up and grinding those hands, and the man is pumped. RJ, tell me about it. Oh, man, couldn't feel better, man. After last night doing such a stupid race, letting Jeff beat me this time, I got my own front. I rode my own race like I said I could. And he had no prayer. He wasn't even in sight. No, he was. There was no one in sight. He moved into the number two position, but by the time he did, you were long gone. That's right, Larry. By the time he got in the second, I had a pretty good lead on him, but I didn't let up. I wasn't watching him. I was watching my own lines, and I pulled away from him, and I was watching him like I was watching last night, but watching with a sort of an anger instead of a, a worry. I was more mad. I was saying, ain't no way I'm going to let you catch me in. He didn't. It's got to be tough, you know, with a lead that size, uh, you're way out in front, it's got to be tough to not let up just a little bit. Yeah, that's, but that's what I did last night, and uh, he beat me, and I was humiliated, embarrassed, uh, I felt like a turd, but <laughs> to not... You're not allowed to say that. Turd's okay, he can't... <laughs> uh, I felt really bad, you know, I let my sponsors down, I let my, you know, my friends and my fans down up here, and I made it up for them tonight, I said I'd get, a, I'd get those three points back, and I got them back. Rick, we have to go back a number of years, and I'm talking about the days when Bob Hanna dominated Supercross, to find anything like what you've been doing. We've had five rounds run, and you have uh, just annihilated, virtually annihilated the competition in every race, although you've not won every one. Right. That's true, Larry. I've, I've done really good in the races, you know, and I've, I've been pretty much the strongest rider out there, but... You know, luck doesn't uh, always always pay off. And back when Bob was dominating the sport, he was like the he was the up and coming kid, and he was the first one to really jump double jumps and really let it hang out. Now you got a lot of people that do that, and a lot of people that train like Jeff Ward and Johnny O'Meara and David Bailey and Brock Glover and I. And so it's any man's race, any any given weekend. But it was my night tonight. How about a shout up here for Wardy, Jeff Ward, ladies and gentlemen. Jeff, uh, by the time you got free of traffic, it was just a little bit too late on this one. Yeah, I didn't get a good start, and I was kind of banging around back there, bowling, and just having a lot of problems. Wasn't riding smooth at all, and then maybe lap seven or eight, when I got up to Johnny, I caught my foot in a hole and kind of it cramped the back of my thigh, and I just couldn't get my leg out in the turn, so I kept it locking up, and I couldn't get it back out straight, so I really... Well, it's hurting. I'm just riding around. I looked nice road. It felt terrible. Uh, we couldn't really understand because the first, it, it looked like in the first part of the race, of course, you had all that traffic and you needed to get through that. And then when you were free, most of them, you, you weren't charging. You weren't riding so aggressive. But late in the race, all of a sudden, it was like someone threw a switch. Yeah, that's what it did. It just uh, just locked back. And I couldn't, it's like, you know, a cramp and you just can't, can't get it straight. So I just had to, couldn't put my leg out. So I just had to keep it on the peg and it just, just you know, didn't help at all.